The fifth and last of the factoring methods I will teach is what I call complex trinomial. The difference between these and a simple trinomial is that the numerical coefficient of the first term is not one, it's some other number. This can still be factored, but the method changes a little bit. We start off the same though. We identify our A, B, and C. In this case, A is 6, B is negative 5, and C is negative 4. But we need a fourth number to work with. We have to multiply A and C together. AC is equal to negative 24, 6 times negative 4 in this case. Our question has changed a little bit. What two numbers multiply to give AC instead of just C, but still add to give B? In this case, what two numbers multiply to give negative 24 and add to give negative 5? They will be negative 8 and positive 3. Now things change even more. We have to rewrite our original question. 6x squared. Then, ignoring the fact that this is a minus sign, we put a plus. We always put a plus, regardless of what sign is here. Put a bracket. That x goes here, minus 4. We are rewriting the original question. The minus has become a plus, and the 5 has become a bracket. Then we write these two numbers inside the bracket, 3 minus 8. The next thing is to break this bracket up. We have 6x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 4. And what we have done is we have converted our trinomial into a grouping, a four-term grouping. So we proceed with what we have learned in the grouping method for the rest of the way. The greatest common factor of 6x squared and 3x is 3x. So we factor it out and we get 2x plus 1. The greatest common factor of negative 8x and negative 4 is negative 4. So I write minus 4 here, <coughs> factor it out, negative 8x divided by negative 4 is 2x, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is plus 1. We have achieved what we want, which is that these two brackets are the same. We can rewrite this 3x minus 4 in a bracket times 2x plus 1, and we have our final answer. If we multiply these together, we will get our original question. Let's try it again with this other question, which has the extra letter. Just to prove that with the tr complex trinomial method, we can do the same thing. We ignore the extra letter until the end, and we just make sure to include it in the answer. A, in this case, is 2. B is negative 3. C is 1. AC is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. What two numbers multiply to give a 2, but add to give a negative 3? Negative 2 and negative 1. Multiply to give a 2 and add to give a negative 3. We rewrite our question, 2p squared, put a plus. We write negative 2 and negative 1 in the bracket, like this. pq plus q squared. We break our bracket up. 2p squared minus 2pq minus 1pq plus q squared. And now we do a grouping. The greatest common factor of these two is 2p. So we factor out a 2p and we get p minus q in the bracket. The greatest common factor of these two is q or negative q. We're going to take out a negative q because that forces the contents of the bracket to be positive. First and negative second. Sorry, that's p. Negative pq divided by negative q is a positive p. q squared divided by negative q is negative q. We have p minus q inside both brackets. We just have to write our answer now. 2p minus q in the first bracket and p minus q in the second bracket. When multiplied together, we'll give you your original question. So the complex trinomial method is very similar to the simple trinomial method, but you have to do these extra steps. The AC, the forced positive sign, the bracket, and the grouping the rest of the way. But it works, and it always works.